Denied. This is the outcome of the extradition case of three Catalan leaders by a Belgian court. The reasons for the dismissal of Spain's request could also apply to Carlos Puigdemont's case. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Luis Puig, Marichel Serret and Tony Comín, three ministers of the former Puigdemont cabinet, can now walk freely throughout Europe. The Belgian court in charge of their case rejected Spain's extradition request due to irregularities and procedural defects. This decision sparked celebration among the pro-independence parties and outrage in the Spanish Supreme Court. It could also affect Puigdemont's extradition case in Germany. In our show, we'll bring you all the details on this and also of Kim Toda's preparations to take office as president tomorrow. Seven pro-independence Catalan officials continue to seek refuge from the Spanish justice system in four different countries throughout Europe. They are being accused of charges that can carry up to 30 years in prison and that's why the Spanish Supreme Court issued a European arrest warrant against six of them. Yet today the judges in Madrid got a major blow to their aspirations. It's the last word. Belgium has rejected the extradition of Catalan leaders to Spain. Luis Puig, Tony Comín and Merichelli Serret are free again to move anywhere in the world, except Spain, where they are wanted for their involvement as Catalan ministers in October's Declaration of Independence. Que és molt important per nosaltres i per tota la resta de persones que avui estan sent perseguides penalment per la justícia espanyola. Demanem que s'acabi amb aquest abús, que s'acabi de manera clara, irrevocable, irreversible. Belgium dismissed the European arrest warrants against them, citing irregularities. The reason? No arrest warrants were also issued for them in Spain. Yet the defense lawyer stressed that the extradition order was also flawed in its substance. La justícia espanyola està imputant uns greus delictes per uns fets que no tenen caràcter delictiu i això ho està fent forçant els tipus penals i no només forçant els tipus penals sinó forçant absolutament les més elementals garanties processals. Many see Belgium's decision as a sign that Spain should give up the prosecution of pro-independence leaders and focus instead on solving the political crisis in Catalonia through political means. Una vegada més, un ridícul del jutge Llarena, una vegada més un fracàs de l'estratègia del jutge Llarena de fer política des de la justícia. The Spanish court handling the case accused Belgium of a lack of commitment and ignorance of Spain's legal framework. The decision cannot be appealed, but Spain can issue another extradition order, which will be the third in six months. There are seven Catalan leaders seeking refuge from Spanish justice abroad. Deposed President Carlos Puigdemont in Germany, the three sacked ministers in Belgium and Clara Ponsati in Scotland. Meanwhile, Marta Rovira and Anna Gabriel, two major figures of left-wing pro-independence parties, are in Switzerland. The newly elected Catalan president, Kim Torra, welcomed Belgium's decision and said he hoped that courts in other countries take the same course of action. We learned this news just a day before Kim Torra is due to take office as Catalan president. Amid some criticism, which the main opposition party is taking to the European Union, his inauguration ceremony will take place tomorrow morning. In many ways, it will look much different to the last one two years ago, when Puigdemont was invested, but will have one thing in common, the oath. Prometeu cumplir lleialment les obligacions... With loyalty to the will of the Catalan people as represented by Parliament. This is how Carles Puigdemont took his oath as Catalan president on January 12, 2016. It was his first controversial move during his term, as it meant breaking with the protocol of swearing loyalty to the king and constitution. Puigdemont swore his oath before 400 people at an event marked by solemnity and pomp. Kim Torres' inauguration ceremony set for tomorrow morning will look different. It will be restrained and without any guests. Unlike past ceremonies, the new president's predecessor won't be able to take part, but Torre will repeat Puigdemont's oath. From Berlin today, Puigdemont announced the creation of several social media profiles for the so-called Council of the Republic, a body aimed at achieving independence that he will lead from exile. Meanwhile, Torre intends to visit the Catalan jailed officials on Friday. The issue of Torre's oath drew criticism from opposition forces.
The main unionist party, Ciudadans, is still condemning his past tweets and articles in which he criticized Spaniards. And today the party took a further step in its campaign. Y lo hemos traducido a cuatro idiomas, lo hemos enviado recientemente a medios internacionales y los hemos enviado a todos los eurodiputados. Soon after learning of Belgium's rejection of the extraditions of three politicians, Ciudadans also demanded that Tony Comín, the only one of the officials who is still an MP, should no longer be granted a proxy vote in Parliament. Now that his movements are no longer restricted, he has no excuse not to attend Parliament, the Unionist Party argues. Yet, Comín would still risk jail should he set foot in Spain. Also today, a Christian Democrat MP in the Socialist Parliamentary Group proposed a state pact between Catalonia and Spain, including the recognition of the former as a nation. Yesterday, Kim Torra and Mariano Rajoy agreed to a bilateral meeting, although the outcome remains uncertain. The judiciary cases involving Catalan politicians are not the only ones drawing the attention of the public in the country. The case of the rapper Valtonic has also led to a wave of condemnation for supposed lack of freedom of speech. He has to enter jail within the next coming eight days following a three and a half year prison sentence by Spain's national court. The rapper from the Catalan speaking Mallorca Islands was charged with glorification of terrorism and offences to the Spanish monarchy for writing some lyrics critical of the king in Spain. His lawyer has announced plans to take the case to the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. Moving on to business news, the port of Barcelona has been going from strength to strength as it has once again proven in the first four months of this year. Container traffic at the capital's maritime facility grew by 20% in the first four months of 2018 compared to the same period last year. It's also seen an increase in other activities, including the movement of passengers. By the fourth month of the year, nearly one million travellers passed through the port. Cruise ship activity has also risen by 30%. According to a recent report by the Port Authority, it generates a total of just over 9 billion euros for the Catalan economy. And from the sea to the skies, now we have some good news for all the travellers out there. Barcelona Airport is planning to expand its direct intercontinental routes for 2018 and 2019 to meet growing demand. Priority destinations include Tokyo, Bangkok, Mexico City and Delhi. Since 2005, the number of direct intercontinental flights from the airport have tripled. These figures show how it continues to follow the positive trends seen last year. It closed 2017 with a historic new record of nearly 50 million passengers flying to and from it, an increase of 7% from the year before. Moving on to culture now. If you're a fan of documentaries, this is the festival for you. Docs Barcelona turns 21 this year and offers a window into what some Catalan documentary filmmakers have been up to. Opening today and featuring productions like Petitet, about a rumba catalana musician, Docs Barcelona runs until the last Sunday in May. With almost a half a hundred works, it features 14 Catalan productions, with other examples like Eugenio, about a comedian by the same name, Time Thieves, reflecting on the monetization of time, and the gripping true crime account of Shootball. Catch these and many more in the coming week and a half at the CCCB Cultural Center and the Aribao Theatres. That's all for us today, but before we end our show, we want to show you a quick preview of one highlight you'll be able to see at this year's Museum Night in Barcelona, La Nit dels Museos. This weekend, a huge network of museums will be open and free for six hours until 1 a.m. Macba, Barcelona's contemporary art hub, is now hosting an exhibition featuring the work of Melanie Smith, an English artist based in Mexico City, whose work has been exhibited internationally and focuses mainly on modernity. Enjoy, and we'll see you tomorrow.